Hey. We back. We're back. Let me just make sure I'm muted. Hi, humans. Ah. It's working? Oh, it's happy days. Okay. Okay. We're in our pajamas because we're literally about to go to bed and I was like, oh, that's right. Can't forget this. We're terrible on the weekend. Better not forget it during the week. Um, tonight's topic was really interesting. Um, there's so many things I could say about this and I hope I don't run, wander off on too many tangents. It's going to happen. It's so going to happen. <laughs> Um, so tonight's topic is what other people think of you is none of your business and I would love to put the F word in there for sure because I see so many people, so many people like swept away by this and look we've all done it, we all have, I mean shit I'm six foot, six foot two just about and I get looked at all the time and, and if I really took on board what other people thought all the time I would be crushed because I know I have spent far too long wondering what other people think about my height and my size, about our height difference, about past relationships and what other people thought about my past relationships. Like I'm sure many of you can look back at a past relationship or friendship and get that pang in your gut because you know you for something happened in those relationships that was because of what you allowed yourself to think about what other people think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? How many times has that happened? I know so many of my relationships where I was like, oh, but my friends don't like him and they think this and they think that. And it, it, would, it ruined my ability to be totally in that relationship right. and really give that person that relationship, that energy that was deserving of that person. So I know myself, I can reflect back to so many times where I did that. Well, the interesting part is you need all of these things to be able to give you the reflective point. You need all of the experiences to be able to grow from. You need to learn through experience, it's the best way to, to grow, to learn, to be. I feel like we spend so much time, well, all of us do, yeah, worrying about what other people think. And the truth is, is that people actually just don't think that often, let alone think about you. <laughs> this is so true. Most people spend so much time caught up in their own mind that really thinking about you is, is very, very brief. And I've heard this a little, a lot is what makes us think we're so important that we're on someone else's mind? Why Why do we do it? It's, mm. it's actually not even what, what, why do we think? Well, it is. It's why do we think that other people think about us? Mm. To me, it because feels like Because we're quite clean. often sitting there thinking about other people. This, is, this quite often will come from, hey Renee, hey guys, um, this will quite often come from people um, having your own judgment. So you're sitting there thinking about what other people are thinking about you because potentially you're doing the same thing countlessly. True. Like True. this so often happens. There's always a divine mirror of whatever you're perceiving in someone else. So, so many of my clients are like, oh, everything's hard and, and my family are assholes and blah, 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 my partner's blah, 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 whatever. It doesn't matter. Totally irrelevant. But often when you sit with that person, you go, cool, awareness, where are you doing that, right? Where are you doing the same thing? And a lot of people will get this, oh shit, hmm? you're right. So often we're so busy thinking about other people and judging everybody else that when we, when we are thinking that other people are thinking about us, it's purely because it's a reflection of where our state of mind is currently sitting at. And there's a certain part of that's that's healthy and then there's a certain part of it that's not. There's a balance within this with everything because as friends, as family, you, you're kind of obligated to go, oh, geez, should I say my point? Should I say, say to them, look, I think you're making a mistake here. And I feel like this is what we do in my close friendships is be able to say, I think you're making a big mistake. I really think what you're doing here is an absolute fuck up. I love you anyway. I love you and go ahead and make the mistake. But I need to say my part. I need you to know how I feel because it would be awful if you didn't have that hindsight, that consideration you were just going gun blazing and then you hadn't stopped to go oh i'm actually making a mistake here mm -hmm. so i feel like there's this point of balance where it is good to have that little bit of thoughts about others and the same way that it would be great for other people to consider your thoughts your feelings your actions a little bit as well mm -hmm. don't get lost there and mm -hmm. this comes to the balance and sitting in the present moment so if you're present again i feel like everything's tying into balance and present if you're present you're not spending your time thinking about that, but when you notice something happen or someone doing something, you can make that point where you can say, look, this is how I feel about that. Then let it go. Stop living with it. Don't carry it. It's not so heavy mm. if you're not carrying it. 
Mm. And there's always coming down to that thing when you're when we spend too much time outside of ourselves and pondering and worrying and fretting or or judging other people, we're not actually sitting in our own locus of control. We're not actually sitting with our own. But who's steering your ship if you're constantly pondering and worrying about everybody else and how they're steering their ship? No one. Your own life gets left. Your own behaviors, your own mannerisms, your own etiquette goes by the by because you're too freaking worried about everybody else and what they're doing, what they're thinking, rather than just being sovereign inside your own space, inside your own mind, your own emotions, your own reactions, and just do you. Like, right, just be in your energy, in your space. I remember so many times training clients, PT clients, and so many newbies being so concerned about other people in the gym and what they thought they thought other people were watching them and doing them and i was well known for being the personal trainer that would get my clients to do the most ridiculous things not in a bad way but have them doing exercises that utilize their body using the most randomest of, of, of objects because quite often the gym would be so busy you couldn't get near an near a machine so you had to get creative mm. and so a lot of my clients would go oh but everyone's going to look at me and judge and i'm like Actually, they're too busy being canaries and looking in the mirror at themselves. And if they are looking at you, they're looking with admiration as to what are these girls doing? How are they so bold? How are they so enjoying what they're doing? This is quite often where people come from. We think that it's coming from a negative space, but quite often it's coming from adoration. Hmm. It's an interesting topic when you say that because with the yoga classes, I noticed people come in. And quite often people are nervous or they want to go up the back or a lot of people, I've had new students say, oh, I just want to go somewhere where no one's looking. And I literally say, no one's paying attention to you. I'm really sorry. They're actually not looking at you. There's not a damn person in that class. They're concentrating, they're turning inward. And I can guarantee nobody's paying attention. If they do look over at you, it may just be to go, oh, that's how you do that. Or where am I? I've, I've got where I'm up to. Mm -hmm. So there is that point. But from this space of ego, all of us think that somehow we're actually important to yeah. other people. And we're, in most cases, not. That's, that's yeah. the interesting thing. But it hurts the ego when you turn away from that and go, you know what? It's not that, uh, we're, we're not that important. Thanks, Amy, for tuning in from Chicago. Hello. Holy shivers. What time <laughs> is it over there? Um, thank you. Sorry, what? that distracted me. I was like a, a canary to a bright light. Um, that had me thinking about oh, a little bit point about that. Ah, oh, society has conditioned us to be precious, right? We're all so fucking precious. What are they thinking of me? What have they said about me? Everyone is so reactive and so hyper concerned about what other people look at them for look at them because of and how they interact with you, what they might be thinking or might not be thinking, because hell, what if they're not thinking about you? Because I mean, that would ruin your day too, right? And all this crap. So we're so hypersensitive about people around us rather than actually just endeavoring to be happy within ourselves, grateful for our life, grateful for the interactions. And you know what? Maybe people are just downright curious without judgment. Why does everybody have to be attacking? Do you know, have you noticed have you possibly noticed humans in your life who do this, where everyone's constantly at them? They're constantly under attack. They're constantly being judged. They're constantly having terrible lives with all the things happening. You look at these people, they create these scenarios and situations, and they're often the ones that you'll go out with, and they're like, what's this person looking at? Look at these assholes looking all smart and fancy. Look at these people being all judgmental to us. And it's like, it's a direct mirror of that person, mm. that person's behavior is creating those situations. Because when you're actually in love with your life, when you're actually happy and balanced and okay with yourself and okay with the fact that you might have cellulite and you might have a pimple on your nose and all this bullshit that doesn't freaking matter, you're still a beautiful, attractive human who's doing your thing. And if you're in that space of being the beautiful human that's doing your thing, people are magnetized to that. So they're generally not actually even judging you. They're purely curious as to what is your magic pill to enable you to be such a great human. So would you, my question for you would be, which human do you prefer to be? The one that people are realizing is a cactus trying to ask for love. It's like, hug me, but I'm a cactus. Hmm, doesn't quite work. Or would you prefer to be the human that's like, I'm here being me, loving you for being you, appreciating the moments, the things, the stuff that happens, okay with the contrast of life and where it takes me. Can I be that person? Which would you prefer to be? Which life 
which view of the world do you think is going to be more pleasant and more fruitful fruit fruitful and which one is actually going to create a better human and a better experience like this is the choice we get to make every day are you going to be the cactus or are you going to be someone who's actually a really radiant there's, being there's a few things that we can control in our life and <clears> one <throat> of them is definitely not how other people feel mm -hmm. we are not not only we can't control we are not responsible for the way other people feel you can be responsible for not being an asshole. You can, that's your, your action, but you can be the nicest person in the world and someone still thinks you're an asshole. My take on it is do everything from a place of love. Then, first of all, you become love. Second of all, you know and you've always done your best. If you're doing everything from that position, from that place, regardless of what the rest of the world says, you know inside that you've done everything you can. The other thing is, and it's uh, Don Miguel wrote this in the Four Agreements, was you remember it don't times. take anything personally. That's one of the Four Agreements. Don't take anything personally. Mm -hmm. Because again, first of all, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. Second of all, if you detach from it as a personal attack, geez, if you, it's easier to drop it. Easy the ego's selected. not hurt. You've, oh yeah, you, you, you think this, oh, that's a shitty situation. Yeah, okay. It's not actually about you. And the majority of times, and I'm seeing this with some uh, people in my life recently, that there seems to be a lot of projection and it's made me question, I go, is that about me or is that about the state of mind this person happens to be in? And yeah, of course, there's always, always a little place that uh, very well possibly could be some of your own responsibility at some point. Well, how do um, you take that? And, and that point, which we talked about with this, there's a balance because sometimes knowing that keeps you a little bit accountable. Mm. If you're doing certain things and you're getting judged for that, maybe... If it happens a few times, maybe you need to dial back on that. Maybe you need to have a look at your life and see, is that serving you for the best? If it is, go ahead and go for it. If it's not, maybe check yourself, as you've said. Mm. But I, I really feel like, and I've had this come up a little bit lately, and I'm like, ooh, is this something that, is this about me? And then it's actually dial back and just sit, sit for a moment and go, no, no, it's just a projection on the way this person is feeling or the state of mind they're in in their life right now regardless of what's been said, regardless of what's actually happened, that's a projection. Mm. It's not about me. I'm not that important that it's about me. And remember <laughs> that the hurt people, um, Amy said this really well, hurt people hurt people. Like, often, misery loves company. Like, this is a massive piece. Misery loves company. So these people will be in pain and quite often they're projecting that emotion, that feeling, because they want you to feel the pain too so you can join them in that pain and that sorrow and that bitchiness or whatever it might be. So often it's not people even want to create... It's not even intentional. I, I it's feel not like always intentional. Not always. This is true. Um, I feel yeah. like energy is contagious. Some, yeah. Sometimes you have someone walk into a room and the whole room will change their, their, their feeling because mm. it might be positive energy and we've all felt this when you're in the best mood, you turn up to a place and the whole mood of the place changes or somebody else comes in in a, in a sad down mood and everyone's just like, oh geez, that was a wet blanket. So energy, not a golden blanket, a wet blanket. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out to a boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, um, moving all right. on. All right, um, I'm lost now. Um, all good. Um, yeah, so basically, inside remembering, jokes. Inside jokes. <laughs> remembering, yeah, hurt people, hurt people. If you're a happy person and you're in love with life and you're creating a good space for yourself and those around you, then that's contagious and it will grow from that. So whatever you're holding, you transmute. So just when you notice the projection of other things around you and you notice yourself stepping out of your own locus of control, which by the way, you only can control yourself. You can only control your feelings, your, um, your perceptions of things and how you react. So that being the truth, choose to be in your control and the rest will sort itself out. It's relatively simple. Cho choose those things, make better choices and spend more time present. Mm -hmm. um, you'll find the balance yourself. You'll work out what serves you based on experience and I've talked about this a lot and it takes a lot to understand for me, maybe maybe it's different for everyone else. I can read it, I can talk it, I can hear it, I can you can tell me all the things that until I've experienced that it, it is not real. Mm -hmm. And experience will make change. Something when when something's real enough for you and it's the same as anything, your belief system's so strong, you don't actually have to experience, but you can believe something so strong that it becomes true. And essentially that's what a belief is, is mm. accepting something that you don't know the truth to. 
that was a story for another day. Oh, but, that's a good one. But nevertheless, when it's real, when it's true, and for me, when I experience it, then I know it's real. That will provoke change. That will make me think, do, feel differently. Mm. And in these cases, for me, when I'm present and when I've felt pure presence, that's that's a uh, very addictive drug that I want more of. Mm. So much so. And that's why I absolutely adore yoga. I always love the PT side of things, gym side of things, sorry. But um, being in that yoga space and just having that time when your, your body is moving, that mind-body coherence is massive massive part for a lot of us who have a busy mind potentially sitting and um, doing yoga will actually become more damaging because of the lack of uh, achievement that some people seek that they seem to think is what you're trying to achieve which you're not but that state of being in yoga where you're moving your body and your mind at the same time you're able to actually get a much clearer channel of openness and emptiness where you can actually seek um, achieve that um, clarity that you're really seeking and that that piece. Sounds pretty perfect to me. <laughs> That's all for tonight. Oh, Danny, you only just tuned in. Thank you, Amy, for tuning in from all the way across the other side of the world. We're about to go to bed and you're just getting up. And everybody else who tuned in, we love you guys so much. And um, we appreciate you being on here and we appreciate your words and your feedback and your thoughts. Yeah, we like liking the feedback. That's really cool to actually have something mm -hmm. to gauge on. This, for us, I guess, is just a conversation we're playing, playing and having... We're actually having fun with it, um, just seeing where it goes. But if you want more of that, of course, we need to know. Otherwise, we'll be wasting time. So, <laughs> just playing. Talking, so yeah, fun. we can talk. That way, one of us can talk underwater. <laughs> so the concrete. We'll be all right. We are good like this. So, guys, have a good night. And um, just think about how. How, Danny, what? Um, think about... Which version you would prefer to be of human? What kind of energy you're putting out into the world? What kind of energies you want more of or less of? And just take check of that. Take a list and see what are you noticing around you? What are the energies, the beliefs, the personas, the, the stories that are playing out in and around your life? And just check in with yourself and figure out where that's coming from with you. Because ultimately, uh, you are the conduit of all that you're creating powerful piece when you really sit with that and realize just how powerful you are. Yeah. Right. Love Peace you guys. out. Bye.